The idea leader in the left base right now, the person who keeps throwing out ideas to no avail, is Elizabeth Warren. She did a big town hall event on CNN last night. And in that town hall event, she just kept throwing out more and more radical proposals. She suggested, for example, that it was time to abolish the Electoral College, which obviously is a great idea. And colors of the wind, man. One of the things that you love about Elizabeth Warren is that she says that she is for America's institutions being durable enough to contain President Trump. And yet she wants to abolish the Electoral College. Here she was yesterday talking about abolishing the Electoral College. Presidential candidates don't come to places like Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they also come to places like California and Massachusetts, right? Because we're not the battleground states. Well, my view is that every vote matters. And the way we can make that happen. <laughs> is that we can have national voting, and that means get rid of the Electoral College. And okay, there's something mildly opportunistic about this. There are arguments for getting rid of the Electoral College. I actually hear those arguments. I think they're reasonable arguments for it, but the argument can't be Trump won. And that, unfortunately, is the Democratic argument on this score. The Electoral College has served America pretty well. And the fact is that if we were to have a straight popular vote, there is no question that people who live in the rural areas would certainly feel a greater divide from people who live in the cities because the fact is that the cities would then dominate our electoral politics. Nobody would get campaigned to. It would be everybody campaigning in L.A. and New York and Washington, D.C. and Chicago and Dallas, all of which, listen, all great cities. I mean, I live in L.A. I've been a city boy all my life. But the fact is, if you want to help rural divides be overcome, that's probably not the way to do it. That wasn't the only radical Elizabeth Warren proposal. She also said that she would think about eliminating private insurance. I like how Democrats are just like, yeah, I'll think about this proposal to eliminate 165 million health care plans. It's worth considering. Well, maybe you should have considered it before you entered a presidential race, lady. You are a co-sponsor of Senator Bernie yep. Sanders' Medicare for, for All bill. And I understand there are a lot of different paths to universal coverage. But, yep. but his bill that you've co-sponsored would essentially eliminate private insurance. Is that something you could support? He's got a runway for that. I think we get everybody together. And that's what it is. We'll decide. We start with our values. We'll get to the right place. So theoretically, though, there could be a, a role for private insurance companies could, under President or there Warren. Could be a, there could be a temporary role. It's a big and complex system. And we've got to make sure that we land this in a way that doesn't do any harm. Everybody has got to stay covered. It's critical. Okay, so she has no solutions, but she is saying all the words that people want to hear. This is Elizabeth Warren Stick. She's trying to steal Bernie Sanders' base. I don't think that it is going to go where she wants it to go. There is one area where she believes that she can make some hay, and that is on the intersectional theory area. She believes that she can move into Kamala Harris's base if she panders hard enough, and so she's been pushing slavery reparations. The impact of discrimination handed down from one to the next means that today in America, because of housing discrimination, because of employment discrimination, we live in a world where for the average white family has $100, the average black family has about $5. So I believe it's time to start the national, full-blown conversation about reparations in this country. I mean, come on, come on. It's time to start the national, but she will not explain what exactly those reparations should be. Should America collectively be sorry for, the, for, for slavery? Of course, it was a historic sin. Should I be sorry for slavery? Should you be sorry for slavery? Well, I didn't enslave anybody, and nobody I know enslaved anybody, and none of my ancestors enslaved anybody, and I have not benefited from slavery. So I'm having a hard time with the I'm supposed to pay out of my own pocket to somebody who may not even be the descendant of slaves if this is simply race-based as opposed to history-based. And again, slavery ended in the United States in 1865. If there's a case for reparations, the best case for reparations is that people were systemically harmed by Jim Crow, and that the people who specifically damaged them should pay them reparations. But the case for slavery reparations is obvious political pandering by Elizabeth Warren and all the other Democrats who are pushing this sort of stuff. Again, focusing on what divides us as opposed to what unites us.